In this tutorial, we will talk about the Color Ramp node, which is a very useful node in Blender, and we'll discuss about Super Color Ramp, which we have created using the Color Ramp node, but it's more powerful. Let's talk about the Color Ramp node first. We will take this default cube as an example. The cube has a default material, which is created with a principled BSDF, and it has got a simple white color. So let's go to the Add menu, and add a Noise Texture node here. If we connect its color output to the base color, we will get a random colored pattern for the cube, which we can call a texture. For simplicity, let's connect the FAC value to this base color. We'll get the same texture pattern, but this is in black and white mode. Now, it's the time to bring a color ramp node from the converter group, and let's place it here. No immediate change is visible. What this noise texture node is doing is, it is giving us a random number between 0 and 1, for each of the shading points on this object. This value is going through a conversion in this color ramp node, and we're getting various colors. But there is no real change in this texture, because the color ramp has two handles at the two extremes. This black handle has got a value of 0, while this white handle is exactly at position 1. So this entire range is now converted into another range, bounded by these two position values. The lowest point or 0 has a black color. So a zero value from this range will be mapped to black color, while a value of one will now get pure white. And all other values between them will get a gray color, so we are getting the same pattern without a change. But if we move this lowest point toward right, the concentration of the black color will increase in the texture, because now anything before this point is same as pure black. So any value lower than this lowest value will be mapped to black. Similarly, if we move this white handle, the white color will see an increase, because any value higher than this, will now get mapped to full white. So this entire range from 0 to 1, is now clamped between these two color values. We can also add more color stops from here. And let's say we change this color, to red color. Then let's add another color stop, and we'll change this to say green. You can use any color of your choice. So you'll get multiple such colors in the texture, based on these color stops. You can move these handles left or right to fine-tune the pattern, or you can change it directly from here, it has the same effect as moving these handles. You can also use this color socket as the input for the color ramp, it will result in a different pattern, because this color information is being converted into a scalar value, which is different from the FAC, but the basic principle is the same. So a color ramp can be used in two different ways, first it converts a given range of input into multiple parts, defined by these color stops and their positions, and it can give us multiple shades of colors like this, that we can use in a shader. But there is also another use case of color ramp. We have a color ramp node within geometry nodes as well. Here we can use this node to manipulate any attribute of an object. For example, we can control the shape of the falloff for the proximity of this big sphere, to each of the vertical columns. You can similarly use a color ramp node to control various other things, it is one of the most useful node. But the problem with this color ramp node is, all these colors are fixed colors, and these handles are at fixed positions based on what we enter, we cannot pass them from another node. Like we have this FAC value as an input socket, or we have such inputs for various fields in this BSDF node, we can connect them to other nodes and easily create a dynamic node tree. But we cannot do that with these color stops, because their positions are hard-coded and also their colors are fixed. So we have created a better version of this color ramp node, called Super Color Ramp, which is more flexible. And it should be visible under the group menu once you install the node. Let's remove this link and move the original color ramp. Then we'll bring our Super Color Ramp and place it between these two nodes. So it looks like this, now let's connect the FAC output to this input and the color output of this node to our base color. We'll get the same black and white texture, which we earlier created with the original color ramp node. Here we can see a minimum value and a minimum color, and also a maximum value with a maximum color, they correspond to these back and white handles of the original color ramp, and you can also change these colors if you want. You can even move these handles to change these values, and the black clusters will increase here. This is exactly similar to the original color ramp. You can then use these stop values and these colors, to create some intermediate stops like this. We have to change these stop values, we can just drag it as well to change its value. Then, let's pick up a green color like before. We'll use the exact same color values, 
to verify if it gives the same result like before. So let's enable another stop here, for the red color, and we need to set this color to red. The saturation was 1, and the value was 0.5. So we can see a similar pattern that we had created with the original color ramp. If we perfectly match these color stop values with the position values of these handles, we'll get the exact same result that we get with the original color ramp, so it proves that their working principle is the same. The best thing about this is, we have input sockets for all these values, they are not static fields, we can easily connect them to other nodes, which is the sole reason why we created this. And here, you can use any of these intermediate stops, or none of them as well, but if you use them, they should follow an increasing order. So if you reduce this value further, at one point, this color stop will be completely ignored. We need to use a value that is higher than its previous stop. Similarly, the next stop should have a value higher than its previous one, otherwise it will have zero effect. The last thing to discuss is this linearity. This field represents this original function that has various interpolation types. If we reduce this value to zero, it will give us the same result as the constant interpolation. We can verify this, it will show the same texture with both the nodes. Then if we change this value to just 1, we'll get the same function as the linear interpolation. And if we use anything in between 0 and 1, any fractional value, it will give us another interpolation type, called ease. So let's change it back to linear, which is the most common one. We were forced to implement it this way, because Blender does not yet support a drop-down list like this, in a custom shader node tree. Just to recap, we have three options here, 0 will give us a constant interpolation, 1 means linear, and anything in between will give us a Bezier type interpolation. And this same node group is also available in the geometry node editor. We have to go to the add menu, then under group, we have super color ramp. It has the same functionality here, so we can very much use this in place of the original color ramp. Let's connect the input to this FAC, and the output should go to the next node. We have to also match the positions of these handles on our super color ramp, so let's change the minimum to 0.3 and the max value should be changed to 0.8. This will now give the same output, as with the original color ramp node, we can see that there is no difference between the two. But with super color ramp, we have input sockets for these values, so we can connect other nodes to them for a dynamic input. Now, we are sharing this node absolutely free with the channel members for this month. It includes both the nodes, one for the shader node editor, and another for the geometry node editor. You can also purchase it separately from our online stores, the links are given below. And if you want to become a member of this channel, you can click on the join button below. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.